First Kings uh, chapter 17. And uh, I didn't originally plan to read the first verse, but we'll go ahead and read that to get a little context. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith. That was before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, which was before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while the brook that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there, and behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today. We thank you for the opportunity uh, to, to preach your word. And uh, we um, not only lean, we, we, we depend heavily upon you tonight. We just ask that you would uh, give me the words to say, guide and direct, and, and make my words yours. And, and give me the wisdom to withhold uh, anything you do not want said. But just give me the... Uh, uh, the words to say, give me the uh, a power to preach your word. Let us uh, give us give us ears that we might hear what you are telling us today. Lord, forgive me of my sins, enable me to preach. We ask that you would save the lost. We ask that you would allow this church to be your lighthouse in this community. All these things that we ask. We ask in Jesus' name that you would receive the praise and the honor and the glory. Amen. Amen. As you're probably familiar, uh, Ahab and his wife Jezebel were uh, the two uh, wickedest rulers they had there in the, uh, the Jewish uh, kings and queens. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, this man, Elijah, shows up on the scene. We don't have any background story about Elijah. We don't know uh, a whole lot about him other than it says he was a Tishbite. He came out of Gilead. Now, if he was a Tishbite, uh, the, the Tishba is uh, the, uh, would have been in the, in the area where the, the tribe of Naphtali was. But he was living at that point. At some point he had moved to Gilead and he had come out of Gilead, uh, came to the king himself. And because of the wickedness of the king and the, and the way they were ruling the country, he prophesied against the king and against the land that there would be no rain. But immediately, immediately God had him leave. He, he proclaimed the word of God, did it boldly, but God commanded Elijah to leave the area at that point. We see the command of God. What was his command? It says, get thee hence and turn thee eastward to hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. Uh, the people that know more about this stuff uh, than I do seem to think that Cherith was uh, behind Jericho. Uh, the, the word and that, that brook drained into, it opened up into the Jordan River. But the word Cherith means a cutting away or a separation. God had separated the man of God 
from the people. God had put him in, in, in a place and separated him uh, uh, from the king and, and uh, those that would do him harm. But he put him away for a while. The great thing we see is God told him to go and he went. And, and it seems like such an easy concept. But yet, we balk at the word of God. We many times, like Peter, say, not so, Lord. He tells us to do something. It, it, it is loud and clear what we should do. Many times gives us direction how to do it. And yet we say, not so. I often think of Abraham and a story that my sister tells of uh, uh, she had not been a, the, the, a Sunday school teacher at this particular church that she went to. And I can't remember which it was she was going to at the time. But uh, I believe, and I may be wrong on this, but uh, I believe the, the, the regular Sunday school teacher for this young class was sick that morning and didn't come in. And they went to her and says, can you teach this class? Well, she was totally unprepared. Um, and but she said yes I'll do it well she went there there was one little boy in the class and she I guess there was a sheet there was something there that she was able to spread like a sheet over the table and she made a little tent there in the room and she told them about Abraham and how God said go and Abraham went the next week when they asked the boy, so well, what did you learn last week and, and with Sister Debbie? Well, God said go, and Abraham went. It sounds simple, but yet we make excuses. We don't obey God's word. When it is time to go, it is time to go. God will give you direction on where to go. God will tell you what to do. But we have to be obedient. As a matter of fact, he says, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Notice the wording in that verse. He didn't say, go and I'll tell the ravens to feed you. He'd already told the ravens. He'd already commanded the ravens. And the ravens obeyed. Now understand this. Ravens are an unclean bird. Ravens are scavengers. To the people of Israel, they were not supposed to have anything to do with unclean animals. But the raven was an unclean bird. He said that the, these birds, these birds, and that'll be my first point under the command of God is the birds. The birds did what God told them to do. Now, if you know a raven, if you've seen a raven, they get and they, they, they find something to eat and they eat it up. Well, that would be natural for them. But what they did was they gathered up the food, the bread and the flesh, and they brought it to the prophet. Just as they would have brought to one of their own baby birds. God commanded the ravens to do something and they did it. As a matter of fact, all creation at the command of God, does what God tells him to do. And I had this written in my notes, but since I don't have my notes here in the, uh, I believe it was Joshua chapter 10, but I know it was the book of Joshua. God commanded the sun to stand still. You know, it's one thing to tell a raven to do something to have it do, but he told the sun to stand still. The sun stood still. In the book of Isaiah, for Hezekiah's sake, God told the sun to move backwards. And it did. In the book of Daniel, God told the lions. 
he closed the lion's mouths and the prophet was not eaten. In the book of Jonah, God opened the mouth of the great fish and the prophet was swallowed but not killed. That book in Jonah tells us a lot about, you know, God says, prepare the great fish. Then once Jonah went in and preached, God prepared a gourd to give him shade. God commanded the gourd to come up from the ground, and it did. Big enough to shade Jonah. And it's not just the big things that listen to God. He commanded the worm. He prepared a worm, and it ate the gourd. The, 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 the sun and the wind in the book of Jonah all could have listened to the command of God. Yet the man of God fought him at every turn. Oh, how foolish it is to fight against God. Oh, how easy, much easier, how much more beneficial it would be if we would just listen to God just as everything else does. Now, ultimately, God's going to get His will anyway. We're not going to stand in God's way. You know, we sang that song, Trust and Obey. Jesus told Paul, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. All that we would be like Elijah, like the ravens. like all of creation and submit willing to the will of God. So, Elijah had the brook and he had the birds. He had the provision of God. Now understand this. Elijah was there at God's command, at God's will, it was God's plan that he was there, but it was not necessarily a fruitful place for the prophet of God. If you're a prophet, if you're a person who is serving God, you want to be fruitful. You should want to be fruitful at least. Jesus talked so much about the importance of being fruitful. It was not a fruitful place. But it was a place that God had put them for a time. He wasn't able to, to preach. He wasn't able to, to, to uh, uh, prophesy to the, uh, to, the, to the Jewish people. There were no converts and there were no conquests. But Elijah was in God's will. Then we see the suffering of the prophet. It says it came to pass after a while the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now God had pronounced this judgment there in Israel because of the wickedness of the people. You say it was just the king that was wicked. The people allowed this king to stay in power. It is amazing how many wicked kings and the people usually, the, the king usually reflect, reflects the people. You know, in our, in our country we have elected officials and they reflect the will of the people. And we've got all this wickedness that goes on in the country and we put people in office who either support it or at least do nothing about it. You say, well, he was the king. They could do nothing about it. When, when uh, Rehoboam said something they didn't like because it was going to be, he was <laughs> expecting them to work harder, they sure did something about it, didn't they? In any event, 
God had pronounced this drought, said it will not rain until Elijah gives the command again. The brook dried up. See, the prophet of God, the man of God, the Christian today is still affected by the judgment of God on the land. We're still affected by the judgment of God here in this country. Whether it be famine, whether it be natural disasters, whether, whether it be uh, uh, whatever it is, disease, we're still affected. But God used God used that time, that situation that the brook dried up, to once again command the prophet. You wonder if he got a little bit comfortable there. He had, you know, the, the rest of the country was suffering. Here he was, he was living by a brook. He had all the water that he, that he needed. The food was being brought to him. But God did not call him. It was not God's plan to preserve him just so he could be comfortable. God does not save us and preserve us and keep us just so we can live out a comfortable life. God has a mission for us. Sometimes God will dry up the brook and say, you need to go, you need to, to, to go elsewhere. You've completed what you could complete here in this time, in this situation, in this place, perhaps. The scripture says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 46, if I can recall that verse correctly, that God sends the rain upon the just and the unjust. God does these things for, we, for a plan and for a purpose. And we're not overlooked in this plan and this purpose. We are a part of the grand plan. All these things work out for God's plan and God's purpose and for our good. So God said, go. Arise and get thee to Zarephath that belongeth. To Zion. Now this was a this was a, a, a heathen country. Zion, you know, Jesus spoke about here in Zion. And he said if the miracles had been performed there, there that, that had been performed in, in Israel, that they would have repented. But God had a mission. It was time for Elijah once again to go. The brook had dried up. So God sent him to Zarephath. Once again, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain me. Remember what we said about the ravens? God had already made plans. God had already made arrangements there in Zion. And once again, the prophet went. The prophet obeyed God. Rather than sit by a dried up brook, he went. Now where did he go? He went to another place where there was famine. But God provided. Even there. Elijah could have continued to be blessed with a full running brook and the ravens. But God knew that widow woman needed the man of God to go and intervene in her life. Because I believe, because I believe that because 
Elijah was faithful to the command of God. Now we do read a little, a little bump in the road where he got a little bit uh, depressed and and, and uh, surely we are human and we, we are subject to these things but all the great things that God did because of the obedience of Elijah. Did God need to, to use Elijah? No. But God blessed Elijah. We, as God's people, need to be listening to his voice. To be obedient to his voice. Will there be hardships along the way? Of course there will. Guess what? There's going to be hardships anyway. There's going to be hardships anyway. Man who is born of woman is short of days and full of trouble. Oh, but what a blessing it is. When God says go, to go. When God says do, to do. When God says dwell there, to dwell there. When God says speak, speak. I've probably not said anything that you don't already know. But we need to refresh ourselves on all these truths from time to time. Brother Don, would you dismiss us in prayer?